So today, uh, we had our embassy move, the, the United States moved our embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem uh, for uh, Israel, uh, recognizing it as the capital of Israel. Uh, the so-called indivisible capital is what the Israeli right wing says. I don't know what that means. It's split into two parts. The Israeli part and the Palestinian part it should be divided. Uh, it's a very, very easy solution. Palestinians should get the half they live in and that is currently occupied and the Israelis should get the other part of Jerusalem. I know everybody says it's a holy city and it can't be divided. It is not a holy city. Uh, if God uh, likes that city, he's got a curious way of showing it, having led uh, many, many people to their deaths in defense of some nonsense piece of useless real estate. So uh, as they were doing those theatrics and Donald Trump sent Jared Kushner, his secretary uh, treasury for some unknown reason, Mnuchin, uh, to the uh, opening of the embassy uh, just 40 miles away, well, the Palestinians decided that they were going to try to cross the border. Um, now, uh, there were uh, some uh, stone hurling, as you'll see in a video we're gonna run for you in a little bit, uh, involved in some rubber tires. And so was the Israeli uh, response proportionate? Of course not, uh, not with this right wing government in place. So right now I'm sad to report at least 55 are dead. Uh, of course, all Palestinians, uh, no Israelis were even remotely close to being injured. And more than 2,700 wounded. Now imagine if uh, the Palestinians had done a terrorist attack inside Israel and 55 were dead and 2,700 were wounded. It would be a colossal story and everybody would talk about the atrocious, horrific terrorism uh, perpetrated by the Palestinians and rightfully so. Now when a state does violence, whether it's America uh, doing a bombing where we bomb a, a wedding, Oops, and we kill civilians of, or the Iraq war where hundreds of thousands, if not millions of civilians died. Uh, when Saudi Arabia bombs Yemen and kills civilians over and over again, or when Israel uh, massacres Palestinians at the border, that's not called terrorism. Not exactly clear why, but if the state does it, it must be okay. No, it is not okay. That is why the Gaza Strip, unfortunately, is an open air prison where two million people have been imprisoned. Now, if you think that's hyperbole, well, try to walk out of Gaza and see what happens. Oh, right, that just happened today. If you try to walk out of Gaza and you get, get within hundreds of yards of the border, you will be executed on the spot. And that's unfortunately exactly what we saw. There's a New York Times reporter who was covering it uh, recently. Uh, he's the Cairo bureau chief, he went and was uh, with the encampment, he thought it was gonna be a quiet night last night, uh, and all of a sudden, bullets started raining down, And but there, there was no hurling of stones, there was no burning of fires, uh, there was nothing going on at the time. No, they had come to within, apparently, without even knowing it, some enormous uh, distance from the border, and apparently it was good enough for snipers to fire at them. Now, you might think maybe it was warning shot, no, they shot a woman, she had to be taken to a hospital. A woman who was doing nothing in the middle of the night. So when the New York Times reporter sees it, he's like, no, really? They're just shooting people that are clearly, clearly not a threat. Yeah, yeah, that's what they're doing. So I, I know the Israeli excuse and the American excuse, and I'll get to that in a second, these monsters saying, well, they made us execute them, they made us do it. I think there might have been a couple of other choices. So now, uh, let's tell you what uh, neutral observers are saying. The United uh, Nations High Commis Commissioner for Human Rights are, is saying it was the quote, shocking killing of dozens, injury of hundreds, and then now we know thousands, by Israeli live fire. They say, well, the problem is the Palestinians, when we uh, do the tear gas, it's, they're so far away that the tear gas oftentimes blows away in the wind then maybe if they're that far away, they're not an imminent threat. I know, that's a wild and crazy idea. Uh, or sometimes now the Palestinians have figured out how to bury the gas canisters before they go off. They're like, and the, and the, lot, and the plastic bullets uh, are not good at that distance. Thereby admitting you are shooting from a gigantic distance. The plastic bullets cannot even reach or be effective at that enormous distance between you and the protesters. So they said, well, I, we had to, we had to fire live bullets and kill those people. 
It is a gross, gross definition of had to or self-defense or any nonsense excuse that Israel and the United States is using. Uh, the United Nations went on to say that this was, quote, an outrageous human rights violations. Um, BBC reporting Israel said, this is, gives you a sense of the absurdity of their response. Israel said some 40,000 Palestinians had taken part in, quote, violent riots at 13 locations along the Gaza Strip security fence. Do I believe, as reported by all the media outlets, that there was 40,000 protesters? Yes. Do I believe, do you believe that the women, children, and everybody else there were 40,000 violent rioters? No, by definition, if you oppose the occupation, they consider you a violent rioter, a terrorist, an Israeli government official today saying Nazis. Let me get this right, the Nazis were the ones that were being shot and killed that had the stones, okay. Or in a lot of the cases, didn't have anything. They were just nonviolent protesters walking uh, towards the border. I think that is the kind of hyperbole that should not be used on either side. It is absolutely outrageous and certainly should not be used by the side that has much greater weaponry and has uh, caused a much greater death toll. Uh, but it shouldn't be used by either side under any circumstance. Uh, now, the New York Times explains the charge was often led by women dressed in black, waving Palestinian flags and urging others to follow. Boy, that does sound awfully dangerous. So Doctors Without Borders says the international, that's an international medical charity, of course. They said on Friday, so this was before even the worst of the shootings, that it had treated more Palestinians uh, along the border at its Gaza clinics in this past month than during the 2014 conflict and that some of the exit wounds from Israeli ammunition were quote, fist size. So this has been going on now for a number of weeks. It started at the end of April. It is supposed to culminate uh, tomorrow uh, in the 70th anniversary of both the creation of Israel and what the Palestinians called the Nakba, the catastrophe where a lot of them were driven from their homes. And now I, along with many others have mixed feelings uh, about that situation. Uh, now, that being said, Israel and Palestine both, let's put it this way, both of those territories exist, both of those human beings, sets of human beings exist. One is recognized as it should be, Israel, but they say, oh no, but some of the Palestinians, some few of the Palestinians have not right, uh, ex uh, Acknowledge our right to exist. You exist, what difference does it make? And you know exactly, and they have already told you that in the so-called peace negotiations that apparently under Netanyahu are never ever going to happen, they would of course say that you have a right to exist. The other side, their state does not exist because of the occupation. Yet somehow Israel is more threatened. Well, Palestine doesn't even exist yet because Israel occupies it. I think that that might be a graver threat. The prison they have in Gaza Strip for two million people might be a bigger problem. The execution of anyone that walks near the border might be a bigger problem. So look, Israel gets to play both sides of this. And again, it is the right wing of Israel, it is not everyone in Israel. Unfortunately though, that virus has taken hold inside of Israel that the Palestinians are the enemy, they're all the enemy and we must never stop the occupation. I hope that, that we can counter that, I believe and I, and I have faith that we will. I believe that the left wing will and, and the moderates both in Israel and America can rise up and rescue the situation, but right now it is dark. But that, that strand of thought that the occupation can never end and if Palestinians come anywhere near the border, they should be killed. Well, that means they have no hope. What do you want them to do? Terrorism is unacceptable. All decent people agree with that. I agree with that, of course, right? So we don't want them doing a violent path. If they go to the United Nations and ask for a state, they say, how dare you? If they do a boycott, they do an economic uh, protest, they say, how dare you? Now they go and do a walk to the border and they'll get executed. And what does Israel say, how dare you? I don't know what they're supposed to do. So now, by the way, to my point about it is not everyone in, in Israel. On Friday, B'Salem, a leading Israeli human rights organization, criticized the military's use of lethal force, saying that the demonstrations were no surprise 
and that Israel had, quote, plenty of time to come up with an alternative approach or alternative approaches, and they chose not to. So they say, and this is quoting the Israeli Human Rights Organization, uh, the fact that the live gunfire is once again the sole measure that the Israeli military is using in the field evinces uh, appalling indifference towards human life on the part of senior Israeli government and military officials. Look, do not give hope, or give up hope on Israel. Do not give up hope on the uh, even their democracy. No, of course their democracy does not include the occupied territories. So I get that it is a force to call it a democracy when you occupy millions of people, oppress them, and give them no freedom, no democracy whatsoever. At the same time, within Israel proper, there is a diversity of thought, and the left and the moderates can win. But again, today is not that day. Instead, Netanyahu at the opening of the uh, embassy said, quote, what a glorious day. Now, if you're saying, hey, maybe that was before the violence, no. If you're saying, hey, maybe that was before he knew his troops had massacred Palestinians, no, he knew that. And in fact, he went on to say in that same speech, we are in Jerusalem and we are here to stay. We are here in Jerusalem, protected by the great soldiers of the army of Israel. And our brave soldiers are protecting the border of Israel as we speak today. That's what the he calls it. So Netanyahu knows that those massacres are happening. Obviously, his government ordered it, and he says, what a glorious day. Well, if you're a right winger, and your only answer is war, and you don't view the other side as human, I guess it is a glorious day for you. I get that he's referring to the opening of the embassy, but the opening of the embassy is partly what is causing this violence. Do I want there to be an embassy in a US embassy in Jerusalem for Israel? Yes, I do, I do, once we have a peace deal. Once they both have a state, and you know what the parameters, everybody knows the parameters of the peace deal. The Palestinians get the West Bank and Gaza Strip and East Jerusalem. But no, 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 they will not give it up. So Israel and their right wing government says under no circumstances. So one excuse after another, and then after uh, doing what they did today, which yes, were executions. Uh, they then turn around and blame the Palestinians. So let's go to that, and they're not alone. The US is doing that as well. So first, we go to Jared Kushner at the embassy opening, and he has a reference to it. Listen carefully. President Trump was very clear that his decision and today's celebration do not reflect a departure from our strong commitment to lasting peace, a peace that overcomes the conflicts of the past in order to give our children a brighter and more boundless future. As we have seen from the protests of the last month and even today, those provoking violence are part of the problem and not part of the solution. Yeah. Oh, big applause line there. Those provoking violence. You made us murder you. What do you mean? You were within 300 yards of a border and our rubber bullets couldn't even reach you. So we had to fire live bullets and kill you. You made us do it by provoking violence. I mean, the, the so-called weapons that the Palestinians are using are literally a slingshot. That's a weapon from 2,000 years ago, I know, because it's in the Bible. You know who used that? David. You know who he was fighting? Goliath. Goliath, <laughs> in this scenario, says, well, you made me execute David. I mean, he had a slingshot. What did you want me to do? But in this case, Goliath has nukes. In the case of Israel, literally. <laughs> All right, now. Of course, uh, here in America, uh, people are going to pick up that baton. Who uh, is going to be leading the charge? Fox News, of course. Here's another uh, reference to that. Well, the Palestinians were warned they could get hurt if they approached the fence, and they did. And Israeli snipers have apparently killed a number of Palestinians. We do know right now at least 26 are dead. Uh, and once again, the Israeli government was very clear. We know that uh, you have called for protests, but if you get close to the fence, there's going to be trouble, and there has been trouble. That's right. Well, that's right. They were warned. You were warned that uh, snipers will kill you, snipers. If you're in imminent danger and you're worried that you're gonna lose your life and you fire, okay, I get it. But snipers were the ones shooting. Snipers don't do hand-to-hand -hand combat. Snipers are not anywhere near the action. Snipers, by definition, fight for 
and, and, and fire from a great distance. I mean, you were warned that our snipers were going to execute you. But there you were walking along uh, some area. We warned you not to walk in the prison. So now we're going to go to Raj Shah speaking for the American government. God help us all. Uh, look, by the way, credit where credit is due. Reporters doing a decent job of grilling him on this. Let's watch. Well, we believe that um, you know Hamas is responsible for these for these uh, tragic deaths. That their uh, rather cynical um, exploitation of the situation it is what is what's leading to these deaths, and uh, we want them to stop. So there's no burden on Israel to do something to sort of rein it in. No, we we think that uh, we shouldn't lose sight of the fact that Hamas is the one that, uh, frankly, bear responsibility for the dire situation right now. Jared Kushner in his speech pointed a finger at the Palestinians, saying they were responsible for provoking violence. But given the fact that it's only Palestinians who are being killed, should Israel not shoulder some of the blame? Well, as I said earlier, we believe Hamas bears the responsibility. Look, this is a propaganda attempt. I mean, this is a, a gruesome and unfortunate propaganda attempt. I think the Israeli government has spent weeks um, trying to handle this uh, without violence. And uh, we were find it very important. rocks 50 meters from the wall and were faced with sniper attack. I mean, is the White House in denial of the split screen reality that's occurring? Again, we believe that Hamas is responsible for this. Blake. Yeah, no matter what, don't care. <laughs> Hamas is responsible. Uh, according to the US, Israel can never, ever do anything wrong. I, gee, I wonder why the rest of the world doesn't think we have any credibility on this issue. We were supposed to be the neutral arbiters of a peace process. Who are we kidding? <laughs> neutral arbiters. The Palestinians get executed and we blame the Palestinians. Well, they made us do it, it was a provocation. I can't believe that they would walk, how dare they? And so, by the way, the Israelis had to do it. Uh, you know how many Israelis were uh, wounded? <laughs> Put aside, killed. Zero wounded, zero. You know why? Because they were not in imminent danger. That is not what was happening. Now, final thing, actually two things. Uh, before I get to the proposed uh, solution, I wanna read you a Chuck Schumer quote because you have to understand how bipartisan it is in America. Uh, in this case, there is no back and forth. There is no, I can't believe Donald Trump did it. There's wild applause on all sides. So here's the so-called leader of the Democratic Party in the Senate, Chuck Schumer. He says that the embassy move was, quote, a long overdue move. We have moved our embassy to Jerusalem. Every nation should have the right to choose its capital. I sponsored legislation to do this two decades ago, and I applaud President Trump for doing it. He applauds President Trump for doing it. Well, thank you, Mr. Resistance, for applauding President Trump and, and the grotesque violence that has led, that has come out of that decision. He's like, well, I wanted to be, do this outrageous action decades ago. I know you did, Chuck, I know you did. Uh, he says, every nation should uh, cho have the right to choose its capital. Well, that's a fair point. Okay, the Palestinians also choose Jerusalem. Oh, what? Oh, but the Palestinians can't. Chuck Schumer, Donald Trump, Jared Kushner, Raj Shah, all of Fox News, what happened? I thought every nation could choose its capital. Oh, But Palestine is not a nation, why? Oh, because you want to end the occupation. So Israel and the United States gets to do everything they want, including death, destruction, <laughs> shooting and hitting 2,700 people. But the other side is not allowed to do anything. They're not even allowed to walk to the border. They must stay in their prison, and I guess that people must know when they are defeated. That is their uh, rationale. So Palestine cannot choose its capital. Palestine doesn't even exist. And the US and Israel cheer uh, enthusiastically. I think the Palestinians should put away even the slingshots. What are you gonna do? You're not gonna do anything with that. All it does is give them an excuse. I know that they'll kill you anyway. So put aside the slingshots, never ever do an act of violence. Do not pick up a stone to burning tires, what the hell is that gonna do? So the leadership of Hamas, please stop being so stupid and have putting rocks in those people's hands. So, because I know that if they just walk, and I know that New York Times and others have reported for just walking they are killed. So then why are you helping the Israeli right wing government with the optics with the Stones and the tires, put aside the any t talk of Molotov cocktails or stones or tires, and put that aside and just walk with no weapons at all.
I know that they are likely to mow you down. And if they do, I look, if you're part of Israel, why do you want the world to hate you? I don't want that. I want Israel to be a strong, healthy country that lives in peace and and and, and abides by the its the founding principles. And I know some of you are skeptical about that in Israel, but then Israel should prove them wrong. The Palestinians should act with nonviolence and the Israelis should do what's right. And and so when the rest of the world is outraged, don't pretend that you can't figure out why they're outraged when you imprison these people. You say they have no hope whatsoever, and if they go anywhere near the border, you execute them. That's why the rest of the world is outraged, and that is not good for Israel. It is not good for the Palestinians, it's not good for the whole world. The only people it's good for is right wingers who profit from war, like Netanyahu and Donald Trump, and yes, apparently also Chuck Schumer. And if you are in favor of perpetual war, Chuck Schumer, you are also a right winger. Two easy ways to follow the Young Turks. One is hit the subscribe button down below, uh, then you're a TYT subscriber. And second is ring the bell. And when you do that on YouTube, you're notified of our videos.